Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having uh, not that, having an awesome day. Got a lot going on. I was an alert, daily alert for my meds. But anyway, put that there so I don't forget. Look, I hope that you guys are having a great day. I hope that everything is going according to plan but that doesn't always happen we should understand that we should know that we should be prepared to take on those challenges as they come about we cannot be caught up in a situation in which we become frenetic and unglued because the vicissitudes of life stroll into our paradise we must gain an understanding that life is about moving and meeting the challenges that come before us our victories are because we met the challenges head on and we stood firm in our convictions and our beliefs and our desires and our aspirations and our goals and we didn't turn around we didn't relent we didn't fold and uh i didn't put anything too much in the description box but there are some resources over there for people who want books that are inspirational books that are motivating and empowering uh who want to work with me directly in a one-on-one -on -one capacity that's in there i'm not going to get into that big today because i want to come to you and i want to share with some, something with you and i want to be as succinct as i possibly can and those of you who know me know that I am not the best at sharpening things because I want to make sure that when I deliver something that it's understood, that it's felt, and that people can take it and apply it to their lives. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something from a passage of scripture that most Christians should know. Uh, those of you who are not Christian, uh, stick in because the principle that I'm going to extract out of that walks no matter where you're walking. Uh, I'm not here to tell you how you should have your relationship with the most high, but I'm telling you that that disconnection is a big part of the problem. But you have to make that move. All of the restricting things that are forcing you down the alleyway will only frustrate you. So let, 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 me, let, me, let me get into this real quick. I'm, like I said, I don't plan on taking a whole lot of time, but I want to truly share with you uh, something. Um, most of you who have followed me know I talk about it a lot. 2012 by far was the worst year of my life so much went on i lost a sister i lost a brother-in-law uh i dealt with the total collapse of what i had worked years to build in the way of my uh business uh i mean if there's a such thing as rock bottom i was there i was on my back but i was not out there was something going on inside of me and there was this thing inside of me that wouldn't quit. And so I'm here and I'm thinking and I keep saying, man, why is this particular passage just ringing in me? And it, it was it was it, it was and David encouraged himself in the Lord. And that's the only part that I could get. And I'm like, OK, why is this coming back? OK, I need to learn how. And let me tell you something. There are going to be some times when no matter how many people you have around you, you can't seem to find the encouragement. If you're lucky, you have someone like me that's like plugged in. You know, having Marion in my life means that there's always somebody that's speaking me up, that's encouraging me, that's holding me accountable as well, that's not allowing me to get caught up. We don't do pity parties here. We don't do any of that. We sit up and we know we've got some stuff we got to deal with. We are aware. We are very, very cognizant 
of spiritual warfare, spiritual battles. And I'm not talking from a religious sense, that old cliche and stuff. I'm talking the real live warfare that we fight every day that flows through these different places and stages in our lives from our mentality to our spirituality, to our emotions, to our physicality. We're feeling it in every area of our lives, whether we understand it or whether we know it or we know how to deal with it. But I remember going through this. I mean, I'm, I'm literally at a point during this time where I have lost everything. And then something says, just go to the scripture because it kept coming to my mind. And I'm going to paraphrase it so I can get through to it, so I can make it make sense to everybody. But this is a time during the rise of David, before David became king. David had been anointed by, by, by Samuel. But he had not yet become king. Saul was still king and Saul had become intimidated and frustrated by David. And so he was in pursuit of David to try to kill him. But yet David had this inexplicable, or unexplainable respect for God's anointing on Saul. So no matter what Saul wanted to do him, David wouldn't kill him. There were times that David snuck in a cave and cut a piece of Saul's cloth to let him know I was there and I could have killed you but he wouldn't kill him As a matter of fact at the end of the game the person who claimed they had killed Saul David beheaded so that's the kind of respect that David had for Saul but David was with a band of guys and they were moving around they were doing things and they had left a camp in a city they called Zilgag and 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 they went off to go do some stuff him and his his his, his band of warriors so to speak and when they got back to Zilgag the city had been burnt and all the women children and even the men that were left behind had been taken all the spoils and everything that they had gathered had been taken and they wept and the bible said that they wept until they had no strength to weep any longer and then the men became frustrated and were talking about killing David. They were going to stone him. And it's at this point that the, the scripture says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, the word that is interpreted or translated uh, encouraged in some Bibles, strengthened, strengthened in others is uh, Kazakh. It's the Hebrew word Kazakh, and it has a massive, heavy connotation of encouragement and being strengthened, but in specific self-encouragement, strengthening oneself in a knowledge of self. And in this case, David was strengthening himself in a knowledge of self as it relates to the Lord. David had been anointed as the next king of Israel, and that meant he had a unique relationship with God. And so he decided that at that point, he was going to encourage himself and he was going to take action. He wasn't going to sit down. See, there are some things in this that if you just quote that part, you don't get. You don't get this. So I'm going to break it down. He says, David encouraged or strengthened himself in the Lord. And then it goes on, though. He says, then he says, it says that one, 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 skip over one scripture where he tells uh, the priest to bring in. Uh, the epic, but then he comes right after that. And he says, and David inquired of the Lord. In other words, he sought the advice and the counsel of God. And in it, he asked, should I pursue these warriors or these troops or this band that has raided our camp and took our women and took our belongings? Should I pursue them? Will I recover what has been taken? And God said, you surely shall pursue them and you will recover all that has been taken, all that has been lost. And when I looked at that in 2012, I said, wait a minute. It has been lost but it is not gone forever that if I can get my head together, if I can keep myself from losing my mind in this terrible time, I will recover. And so I started a process of recovery. I'm telling you a story because I want you to understand that. And then I want you to understand that there's not this straight shot 
to elevation that most people envision and that's why you get frustrated because it's easy to sit down and watch videos and scroll down your 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 news feed and timeline and see all these people talking about what they're doing and how they're living and all of this stuff and 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 and, and think something's wrong with my life but they're not telling you the story behind all the glory that that they are putting before you they're not telling you how many times they failed before they got their business to work they're not telling you how many times they had to refinance in order to fund the business when things got lean they're not telling you how many times they were behind and needed to catch up and and, and, and that they were in fear of losing everything they're not telling you all of that statistics tell me and all the stuff I've studied that the average millionaire will go broke three times over the course of their life they're not telling you about the broken moments they're not telling you about everything they're going they are only showing you that. and then you get caught up in what you see and think that there's this straight shot but there isn't it's it's full of winds and turns and twists and upside downs and inside outs and 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 in in moments of trepidation and and uncertainty and fear that you've got to overcome because it's in that encouraged moment where and that's what the word encourage means it means to take a person from a place in which they are not uh, filled with courage and to give them internally what is necessary to find the courage to take the action. It wasn't simply that David encouraged himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself so that he could inquire of the Lord so that he could take the proper action. It's not about sitting still. It's not about hoping to be rescued. It's about sitting up and knowing what you're capable of and then marching into the situation with a clear cut plan of how you're going to work it. Being willing to adjust as you move because things change. But let me tell you, I went on and I, I started and I had to rebuild and I got back in the last two years up into around about this time in 2019 last year things are going I mean last year was a great year despite the end of it being horrible I still had the best year I had had and so I'm thinking okay great then all hell breaks loose I end up losing a, my, my main channel on YouTube which was the channel that I pushed and promoted a lot of my goods out of and earned a large portion of my revenue from they snatched it with no cause, no warning, there's nothing you can do about it. That's one of the things that I'm pushing now is that we have to create our own platforms that we own. It's good to use Facebook. It's good to use YouTube. It comes with a ready-made system that gives you access and allows you to do the things uh, 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 that you need to do. But you have to also start making sure you become more and more increasingly autonomous as time goes so that when those avenues and doors closed which they will nothing is set to be stuck in 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 in, in indefinitely there's a need in which you have to be able to hold on let me clear that so it doesn't keep doing that okay in which you have to uh keep doing and changing and evolving but anyway i go and i get there and then at the end of last year I lose, I, I, you know, I lose the channel. Then two days after I lose the channel, I end up in the hospital in ICU with what we now know was a mini stroke. You know, I, and I had been having them and didn't know that's what it was. Uh, and, and, and so I'm there, you know, and then I, I, I come out. But now I'm coming out to a decrease in revenue where my family is depending on me. I'm talking to you. I'm sharing with you. I'm probably sharing with you more than my wife wants me to right now because she believes we're under spiritual attack. But I'm built for this. I want somebody's out there going through something and they need somebody that's got enough courage to share with them what it's really like so that they can see what the other side, what it takes to get to the other side. So I'm sitting there and I'm going, OK, I'm going to figure it out. You know, uh, you know, I got, you know, I, 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 I enter into when it comes to investors, I have had very few of the course of my life. When it comes to them, I enter into a contract that says I, 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 I offer a guaranteed return of principal. That means even if what I'm asking you to invest in turns barely up, I'm going to give you your money back. And it's not the best business practice 
but it gives me a peace of mind and it holds me accountable. So I'm not running willy nilly with people's funds. So then I've got these people, but that that's okay because I'm getting them paid back. But here's the thing. It gets worse. Can't I go through all these processes to get the channel back? Doesn't have to start over, have to work and do things a different way, have to promote my stuff through different channels, have to find different ways. But I keep pushing, I keep pushing, I keep pushing. And then here comes March. Have five heart attacks, two major ones. One at the final one was 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 enough that I ended up having to have a surgical procedure to open up a 90 percent blockage in my main artery. Doctor, I was literally because I had so much stuff that I had to do. I'm literally trying to force them to let me go. And so I signed a waiver. I forget what they call it, but it's a waiver that says that I am ignoring the advice of the physician, uh, physician advice waiver, something like that. And that I am being released against the advice of the doctor. But I've got to get out because tomorrow there's something I have to get done. That's how I was. I was just so intent on making this work. And I'm so thinking about what my family needs for me that I'm not thinking about what it would be like if my family didn't have me at all. And then as I'm being rolled out of the hospital... Because I forced them to release me. They're discharging me. I'm being rolled to the vehicle. You know, you have to go out in the wheelchair. I have another heart attack. I have a major heart attack. And I'm literally sitting in the chair and I'm feeling it. I know what it is. Now, I had had up that week leading up to this day, I had had four more that I was dismissing. Until the last one got so painful, we had to go to the doctor and we found out what it was. But I, now I know the pain. I know exactly what's happening to me. My heart is in distress. No, I wasn't in cardiac arrest, which means your heart completely stops. I was having a heart attack. My heart was pumping as hard as it could to push blood through that blockage. And it had created a distress and the pain. The heart wasn't getting the oxygen it needed. It was so much that was going wrong. That could have easily took me out. The doctor told me, if you would have made it to your car and got in your car and left, you wouldn't be here. They rush me back in and they have this emergency response team in the room. I mean, nurses everywhere. Each one of them got something to do. They're prepping me to send me down to this room where they're going to find the blockage and open it up. And thank God I'm still here. But I still come home to a family that needs me to figure it out, help figure it out. And no, my wife wasn't putting pressure on me. Matter of fact, my wife was got to slow down. I I'll, I got it. I got no. You don't. You, I got us, and then we decided <laughs> that we have us. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that I encouraged myself during these times, all the way from 2012. And I, if I look back, I've done it before then. But in 2012, it was a time that I'm looking up and I literally had one demand. When I talked to God, it wasn't about deliver me from this. Because you heard me say, God will never del del deliver you from the giants he sent you to slay. He designed you for a purpose. You can't escape that. You can't run from that. You can't pray yourself out of that. There's something that you're here to do. And if you don't do it, you will be put in situation after situation after situation until you do it, until you leave. But you will never be able to pray yourself out of it. So I wasn't praying to God. When I got to it, I knew there was a time that I did. Back in 2000, early 2000, there was something going on. I, I want to share this story with you because I want to encourage somebody. That was this thing I was going through. It wasn't nearly as bad as 2012, but at that time it was bad to me. And so I'm praying to God. I'm like, you got to live right, man. And then just like most people who have grown up in a Christian home, you start quoting scriptures to God as if he doesn't know it. You quoting them to him and you calling them on him. And I never heard from God audibly, but my spirit spoke to him as clearly as I'm speaking to you. I'm telling you, there's a level of communication with God that it transcends audible communication. When you align yourself at the right frequency, at the right vibration, and you make yourself available to hear. I sit up and told God, I want out. God's response to me was one of the most emphatic moments of my life. His response was no. I will not bring you out of this, but I will bring you through it. That wasn't good enough for me. I'm like, no, 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 I ain't trying to go through it. 
I need you to bring me out of it. I don't want to go through it. He said, that's the problem. And so I listened. God told me, and I mean, again, not in any audible way, but in a way of communicating with my spirit as I lay there in the middle of the night. This is like 2 a.m. in the morning. He communicated to me just as clear. He said, I will not bring you out, but I will bring you through it. When I insisted, he says, and I said, I don't want to go through it. He says, that's the problem. He said, like so many others of your time, you're more concerned with comfort. But see, I'm not concerned with you. I'm not nearly as concerned about your comfort as I am your character. And I can't build character in comfort. You're going to have to go through some things. And so by the time 2012 got here, I knew this is something I've got to go through. The only thing, I, I asked God for two things. Three, actually. The first two things had to do with what I was going through. The first thing I asked him is, don't let me lose my mind. I was so afraid that what I was going through was so heavy that I was going to lose it. I said, don't let me lose my mind. Second, don't let me die in this. Let me live until I come out. If, and if you wake me up every day, I'll answer the bell. That was the only communication and deal I had with God. If you wake me up, I'll answer the bell. I wasn't asking for any preferential treatment. I don't want to ask for anything. Just wake me up. You built me for this moment. I'm built for this. You wake me up, I'm going to answer the bell. The third thing I asked him for was my wife. I want a woman, but I want a woman. And I have to say, I don't want to have been totally out of this before you give it to me because I want to know clearly she's with me because of who I am and not what I have. Because see, I had been through that before when I was on the top of the world, just always questioning motives about people. And I wanted somebody that knew the inner me more than the outer me. And I met my wife while I was still coming out of that. She saw something in me that that made her be committed to this man and so we grew so here we are now in 2020 and i done had these heart attacks and now i gotta find a way to get myself healthy and at the same time be a force in the life of my family and i mean everything is coming from every direction when you got a blended family of 13 it's never a quiet moment that's 13 kids not even counting the grandkids we up to what nine now and so all this stuff is coming and things of you know it's this tension that's the other thing you got to understand life is a continuum there isn't this super push and flow and then life, you just flow through it. It's moving forward. Then the tension in the continuum will catch you at a moment when you find yourself moving a couple of steps backward. And then you move. But see, the thing is, I'm going to tell you something, what I had to realize in this. I went back and I looked at the scripture again. And in the scripture, the part says, David inquired of the Lord. And then it hit me. How many people are inquiring of everybody else about their situation other than the Almighty, the Most High, God. Who are you inquiring of to, to tell you the next step? Who are you inquiring of to give you assurance? Who are you inquiring of to establish your identity? Who are you inquiring? Some of you are inquiring of people who haven't even found their own place. Some of you are inquiring of people who have spent their entire life wishing that you failed. I had to realize there were some people in my circle that were literally having a celebration at the thoughts of my demise. And I had to realize that some of those people were people I care deeply about that just could never be satisfied with what I had did. And they wanted to see me and see what it felt like to see me struggle. And I had to stop needing their approval. I had to stop seeking their advice. I had to be strong enough in my relationship with the Most High that I inquired of God. At the end of the day, I'm going to the final source, the final say so. The final say so. I should have been taken out a long time ago. I shouldn't have made it to 20. 
I shouldn't have made it through 2006 to 2012. I shouldn't have made it through multiple strokes from 2016, 2015, excuse me, to 2019, being hospitalized. Go all the way up until 2015, never be hospitalized. And then to be hospitalized in multiple secessions behind something I wasn't understanding. And it should have took me out. The stroke should have took me out. The heart attack should have took me out. The stress of it all should have took me out. But I'm built for this. I, 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 I learned how to strengthen myself in God. I learned how to inquire of God. I learned how to be committed and confident in what I received from God, that no matter what was going on on the outside, I still knew my internal truth. Let me explain that to you, then I'm going to be done. There's a part in Romans chapter 8 that talks about, and the Spirit bears witness that we are who God says we are, the spirit bears witness. In other words, we all have a spirit. That's the most internal part of our being. That's the energy and life force of who we are. He said, but our spirit communicates, there we go, that frequency, that vibration, when you find it, when you get high, when you get rid of the envy, the jealous, the hatred, the anger, the bitterness, all that stuff that's low frequency, low vibration, low energy, that can literally be tested with a Hertz meter. You can literally test your vibration and your frequency with a Hertz meter. When you are having all of these emotional, negative emotions, jealousy, envy, strife, bitterness all this stuff you're down 200 hertz or lower but when you start talking about being full of gratitude you get to 550 you talk about authentic love you're at 500 when you start entering into the idea of enlightenment where god starts to give you revelation about things that haven't happened yet but will happen you're at 700 now you're in that place where god can communicate directly with you but see, the spirit bears witness. Let me tell you about that. People used to look at me when 2012, when I was going through the few people that really knew just how bad things were for me. They would look at me and they would go, how in the hell are you smiling? You're in denial. Do you really need help? You're in denial. I'm not in denial. I see the circumstances. I'm aware of the circumstances. I'm not denying the circumstances. But what you don't understand is I've got a direct connection with God. And my spirit is speaking to his spirit. And his spirit is bearing witness to my spirit. And there's something in my spirit that disagrees with my circumstances. That right there. How you could be in a place where everybody's looking at you and thinking that life is about to take you out. I've seen people on their deathbed in that place and say something in my spirit disagrees with my circumstances. Something in my spirit disagrees with your prognosis, doctor. Something in my spirit disagrees with what you're saying about my marriage. Something in my, you better learn how to connect and listen. To your spirit. On that note, look, I could do this all day. Because see, I can count so many times that I was counted out. I can count so many times that people who were silently my enemies while declaring themselves as friends were celebrating my demise. Huh. But something in my spirit disagreed with the circumstances. Stop inquiring of those who have no high expectations, high intentions, or high aspirations for you. Surround yourself with people who see the greatness of God inside of you. Surround yourself with people who see the unbelievable force flowing and coursing through your veins and, and want nothing more than to see you rise to the full level of your potential. 
And most importantly, seek God. Most importantly, seek God. Hmm. Something in my spirit. This year has been something, but I tell you what. We're still standing. We're still making it. We're still flowing. The family's still doing great. There was something in my spirit that wouldn't accept the final declaration of my circumstances. So I declared something greater. I think it was in the book of Job where it said, when you declare a thing, it's established. Watch what you're speaking about your situation too. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. I wish you the best. Hold your head up. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full so that I die on E. You're like, Doc, what do you mean? Are you talking about dying? No, I don't plan on dying. I want to live to be 100 at least. Full of life. But what I'm saying is when I leave this place, I don't want to leave anything undone. So I live my life on full every day. I go all in, hard in the paint every day. The way I am on this video is how I am all day long. Whether I'm playing with my kids, having fun with my wife, working on the next project, working in the black community, working on the next program for the Visionetics Institute, it's all in. Because I don't want to leave this place like somebody I admire so much. Dr. Miles Monroe would say that the cemetery is the wealthiest place in the world. Dr. Monroe, what do you mean? It, he, he's saying that when you go to the cemetery, in, 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 in one grave there is a book unwritten. In a, another grave there is a career never taken. In another grave there is a speech never given. A sermon never preached. A life not fully lived. They took it to the grave with them and they never used their potential. I'm challenging you right now to walk in the fullness of your design. To live at the fullness of your potential. That's what I say when I end every video with, I'm going to live my life on full. I'm just saying I got 86,400 seconds in a day. I don't waste them. Even when I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping with a purpose. I'm sleeping to rejuvenate. I'm sleeping to recuperate. I'm sleeping to recover. I'm sleeping to open my mind in a state of theta so that I can receive vision. And revelation. I, I, I'm using every moment when I take a nap during the day. It's for a boost to be more effective and 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 and, and, and alert. I try not to just be sitting around casually wasting time. So that's what I'm going to challenge you to do. Look again. There's in the description box. There's plenty of resources for. Those of you who want to work with me, I have a couple of slots open and I'm open to working with you if you're serious about doing it. Uh, talk to anyone on this thread who's actually worked with me and they can give you some insight into how I work and what they've been able to get out of it. And they can tell you if there's value in it. And, 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 and uh, I'm going to leave it at that. But God bless all of you. You have a great day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.
like this record hot. From a conceptual uh, perspective, people talk about it. All of the elements.